What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here. And in this video, we're going to be checking out the Alcatel Axel for AT&T prepaid. So let's get started. So this is one of the latest phones to make its way over to AT&T prepaid and it is being offered at Walmart, only at Walmart, for $49. So definitely a very affordable option and of course you have to keep your expectations in line with a phone like this. But with that said, I'm looking forward to showing you everything that there is to know about this device so that you know what you're getting into if you do happen to buy it. Now here's what the box looks like for the Alcatel Axle. Here are some of the basic specifications, but we'll be going over all of this throughout the video. Also on the back of the box, we do have a coverage map for AT&T prepaid. And then opening up the front flap here, typically you'd find the smartphone right there. And then we do have some directions as far as how to get started. So you can pick a plan, pay your way, and then activate. And then if you want to, you can even do auto pay and add a family plan. So definitely a lot of different options here with AT&T prepaid. Now in the box, we do get some literature here. So we have AT&T prepaid, quick start guide, activate your service. We also have a dedicated quick start guide just for the Alcatel Axel. We have safety and warranty information, and then this advertisement about protecting your phone. We also have a USB wall adapter with Alcatel branding. And this is a 10 watt adapter, by the way, which is pretty nice. We have a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. And then finally, we do have a SIM card removal tool here. Now taking a closer look at the Alcatel Axle, this phone certainly does feature a more traditional smartphone design, especially in the sense that we do have pretty large bezels on the top and bottom, and we do have squared off corners here, which nowadays, if you've seen any other recent smartphones, and especially the higher end ones, they usually have small bezels, a notch, or a hole punch of some sort for the front facing camera, and then the corners of the display are very rounded as well. So again, if you're looking for a phone that has a more classic form factor and layout, then you will feel right at home here with the Alcatel Axel. Now with this device, we are getting a six inch display, and it is an LCD display at 720p. We're getting a PPI of 286, and we are getting an 18 by nine aspect ratio. So not quite as thin and tall as a device that would have a 20 by nine aspect ratio, like many of the other new Android phones that have been coming out this year have. But at the same time, we are getting a decent amount of screen real estate here with the display, which will make this phone a good option if you wanna use it to read articles, eBooks, browse social media, or just read text or watch videos. Now the front facing camera for the Alcatel Axle is five megapixels and stay tuned for later on in the video as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from the various cameras here in the phone. Now with the Alcatel Axle, we are getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage and we're also getting micro SD card expansion, which is good as well. Now typically I would say that 32 gigs is not a whole lot of storage and it certainly is not, especially how apps are getting bigger and bigger, but considering that this phone literally is $49, I feel like 32 gigabytes is actually pretty impressive here. Another thing too, and I'll talk about software later on in the video, but this phone does run Android 10 Go Edition, which means that the system software uses a lot less space in the phone, and in general, this phone is designed to be as efficient as possible when it comes to using the onboard storage. Now, as you probably imagine, there is no wireless charging with the Alcatel Axle, but one surprise that I wasn't expecting is that there is a fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. So let's give that a try right now. There we go, one more time. Very quick. So, you know, maybe not the fastest fingerprint sensor that I've ever used, but for a phone that's $50, the fingerprint sensor works better than some other phones that I've used that are more expensive. And in addition to having a fingerprint sensor, this phone also supports face unlock, which is another unexpected surprise here. So I do appreciate that with the Alcatel Axel, we are getting a variety of different methods for getting into the phone. Now this device only has one camera on the rear, and it is a 13 megapixel camera. Now, unfortunately, there is no portrait mode with either the rear or front cameras, which is a bit unfortunate. But again, for a phone that's as affordable as this one, there always are gonna be some compromises like that. Now, here's how the camera app looks on the phone, and this is through, of course, the main camera on the rear. But overall, it's a pretty straightforward and easy to understand camera app. And despite this phone not having too many different hardware features as far as the cameras go, the app actually has a decent amount of features available. For example, if you want to go over to pro mode, we have all kinds of different customizations for ISO, white balance, and other things here as well. We can also go over to filter mode to add a bunch of different cool filters, 
that you can take in real time when you're taking photos on the phone. We also have Pano as an option. There's also stop motion, which is kind of interesting. And then also we can go up top here and enable HDR. We can enable the timer, the flash as well. We can even choose between four by three, 16 by nine. We can take one by one square photos and you can even take 18 by nine pictures. So that's pretty cool as well. And then getting further into the settings here, we have the ability to adjust the megapixel count for the photos that we take. There's also 1080p video recording here. And the phone also has electronic image stabilization, which is pretty unexpected too. Then from here, we can switch around to the front facing camera and take selfies, of course. So definitely a lot of different abilities here with a device like this, despite it being very affordable. So I would say that in general, we're getting more here with the various camera features that I really expected prior to using the phone. And in general, I've been decently happy with the image quality from the various cameras on the device. Of course, I'll let you be the judge taking a look at the photos right here. But in general, I would say the photos are at least good enough that you know they're worth keeping, they're worth posting on social media, definitely better than other devices that I've used that have pretty subpar cameras. And for a phone that is $49, you can really only expect so much in the camera quality department. But again, I'm pretty happy with the quality considering that this device is extremely affordable. But let's now take a look at some video samples and I'll let you be the judge of that. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a front-facing test video from the Alcatel Axle. Definitely let me know what you think of both the video and audio quality from the video. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p test video using the main camera on the rear of the Alcatel Axle. Doesn't really seem like there is autofocus in video mode. If there is, then it's very slow. There we go, it is focusing. So like I said, kind of slow autofocus, but there at least is autofocus in video mode. Now with the Alcatel Axle, we're getting two gigabytes of RAM in the MediaTek Helio A22 processor. Now in general, performance has been pretty good and I think part of that is due to this phone featuring Android 10 Go Edition. Like I mentioned earlier on in the video, Go Edition is meant to be kind of a limited version of Android that still gives you most of the abilities. Like for example, you can still download any app that you want, assuming that it is compatible with lower end devices. So pretty much every app. But at the same time, with this being Go Edition, they have specifically designed the operating system to work with weaker devices like this one. Now, of course, with this being Android 10, it is a bit disappointing in itself, especially since Android 12 is going to be out pretty soon. It would have been nice, though, to see Android 11 go edition, especially since Android 12 is really going to be out pretty soon from now. And I can't imagine this phone would ever get an update to a newer version of Android. So at least with Android 10 go edition, you still will be able to install all your favorite applications for quite some time now, because there are versions of Android that are way older than Android 10 and still support pretty much every Android app. But if you are someone that does like to get the newest and latest versions of Android as they come out, then you likely will be disappointed here with the Alcatel Axel. But getting back to the processor, I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test here, and this should give you a pretty decent idea of what kind of performance to expect from the phone. Essentially, we're getting a single core score of 112 and a multi-core score of 369. So what I recommend doing is comparing these scores with your current phone to get a better idea of whether or not the Alcatel Axel will be a performance upgrade for you. Another thing I want to point out as well is that you will be getting quite a few pre-installed applications. So this is pretty consistent with pretty much every AT&T prepaid phone, but all of these apps down here were pre-installed automatically. I did not add those in. I did add in these various apps, but you can see there's some games, some streaming apps pre-installed as well. So thankfully you are able to uninstall a decent amount of these, which is good, but it does give you kind of additional work to do when you first get the phone. Unless for some reason you just wanna keep all these apps in the phone and maybe you plan on using them or trying them out in the future. Future. I'm not sure. Now with the Alcatel Axle, we're getting a 3,500 milliamp hour internal battery. And considering that the display here isn't too big and it is 720p, expect this phone to be pretty power efficient. So 
3500 milliamp hours isn't quite as big as some of the newer Android phones that we've been seeing lately, especially devices like the Moto G Power 2021 that give us a massive battery. But at the same time, again, considering this phone doesn't really use up too much power as it is, I feel like 3500 milliamp hours was a pretty good choice here. Now, another thing I wanna mention as well is that with the Alcatel Axel, there is no NFC. So if you are someone that does like to make mobile contactless payments, with services such as Google Pay, for example, then you can't do that here with this phone. But features like that typically aren't even expected with a phone in this price range. But let's now take a closer look at the hardware of the Alcatel Axle. Now, I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here. We are getting pretty big bezels, but in general, the phone does have a very practical form factor. So if you are looking for a phone that maybe isn't necessarily the most modern looking, but at the same time, doesn't feature any design gimmicks, then you should like this one. Now taking a look at the left side of the phone with the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card, we also have the Google Assistant button. Then taking a look at the right side of the phone, we have the power button, volume down and volume up. Then up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Then on the bottom of the phone, we have the speaker, microphone, phone and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And then on the back of the device, we have the camera module, flash, fingerprint sensor, and then the Alcatel and AT&T logos here. Now you probably noticed already, but the back of the phone does pick up quite a few fingerprints and that is due to it being a glossy back. But in general, I think it is a decent looking phone, especially considering that, of course, as I've said many times already in this video, it's only $49. So in conclusion, is the Alcatel Axel a decent option? Well, the first thing is, is that at this price point, you're not gonna find too many other brand new smartphones that will work with AT&T prepaid. I mean, $49 is pretty much as low as it's gonna get for a new smartphone. Now, beyond that, there really aren't too many standout features with this device. However, it is pretty rare to find a phone in this segment that does have a fingerprint sensor on the back and face unlock. So if you really do want to get a very affordable phone that still does give you a fingerprint sensor, then this phone is probably only one of a small handful of options. But I'm really curious to know what you think about the Alcatel Axel. Definitely let me know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. This is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one.